by uh, seven Hungarian priests. Uh, our order in Hungary had been involved in secondary school education and shortly after World War II, uh, the communists took over. And in 1947-48, uh, the communists nationalized all of the religious schools. So most of our men were teachers <clears throat> and they, uh, they had to stop teaching. And then in 1950, the government decided to suppress all the monasteries, so all of the priests that had been teachers had gone back mm -hmm. to their abbeys, and the suppression was to take place at the beginning of July. A graduate of our uh, abbey's um, high school was a policeman and went to uh, the abbot and said, we have received the information on such and such a date, next month, July 1950, the police will arrive at the abbey and just take all the priests away. <clears throat> so um, two of the priests went to the abbey and said, we would like to try to flee, uh, to leave the country. And the abbot gave them his blessing. So there were two groups, um, one four, one three, and they literally went to the border under the cover of night, uh, swam across the river, climbed over a fence, went through barbed wire, and then there was a farmer on the other side waiting with a, a hay wagon. Where they landed, it was uh, Russian-occupied Austria, so they still were unsafe. Uh, so they, uh, the, the farmer took them into Vienna and left them off at the British zone, and that was how they escaped. Uh, in 1957, uh, they came to California, and then in 1961 they started uh, St. Michael's uh, as a junior seminary, a prep school, and then in 1984 we became an abbey. <laughs> Everyone who enters as a seminary has to sing a grand chant. So uh, th they come in and they begin taking chant classes five, six times a week, and then as they progress in through formation, just a few times a week or a couple times a week. And then once they're priests, uh, just basically once on a Friday afternoon. Norbertine chant, as opposed to Roman chant, it's kind of like a dialect of, of, of a language. There are slight differences in what we sing compared to what you would hear at a Benedictine monastery or in the Vatican. Sometimes the particular texts are different, as well as individual notes, which can um, just be different enough to throw you off if you try to sing along. Our St. Michael's Abbey Choir only sings Gregorian chant here at St. Michael's Abbey at 11 o'clock a.m., the high mass here. On rare occasions, sometimes we, we do go out to other places. For example, we have our ordinations in June, which are usually the Mission San Juan Capistrano Basilica, and we will sing for our ordinations there. Abbot Parker, who is the Abbot Emeritus of this community, um, submitted, I think, in the early 2000s to record the tracts, which are numbers sung between the Old Testament readings at the Easter Vigil. He thought that our chant had come to a level that he wanted a, a record just for our archives at the Abbey. So he submitted at our legislative meeting, the canonry chapter, that we record them. And I approached Abbot Eugene, who's the reigning abbot, and he authorized the purchase of some home recording equipment and microphones, which we got. And then in our Abbey Church, we recorded the seven tracts from the Easter Vigil. When we heard the playbacks, we were so charmed by the sound that several of the men said, well, why don't we record this? And there were a few polyphonic numbers we were working on, so we recorded them. And then we came up with a nice collection uh, of different tracts that weren't harmed by the noise of motorcycles from down on the road while we were singing. And we put together an album and disseminated it just to our friends. I was surprised that it went uh, public or commercial, if you will, 
I, I was working in our office one day and um, the administrative assistant came and she said, oh, there's a message from a fellow working for Milan Records, Jade Music, and um, they would like to advertise on your website. Now, we at that point didn't have a website that had any kind of an Abbey store. It's very simple. And um, I called him because I felt bad that we couldn't help out and uh, had a nice conversation with this man, Stefan, and just sort of as a consolation prize, I sent him the two CDs that we'd made here at home, and then I forgot about it. There's a lot to do, and you know, it's just daily, daily work. And about eight weeks later, I was really knocked over because he called back and said, our people in France have flipped out over your recordings and we'd like to distribute it internationally. And my first reaction was, uh, you know, okay, where's the camera? <laughs> Quarter to six every morning we process into the church and we begin our morning prayer. That is the Office of Readings and uh, Lauds. And then seven o'clock we have Mass, celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Each day after Mass we have breakfast and then uh, the uh, conference we're teaching. Uh, we'll go to uh, their, their classes. Uh, we have conferees teaching at a distance from here. They will leave after breakfast also and be gone all day and then come back uh, in the afternoon. Midday we have another hour of prayer followed by lunch and then the afternoon, depending upon what one's assignment is, they might be grading papers, getting lesson plans ready. At uh, five o'clock we have evening prayer vespers followed by supper. Mm -hmm. And then there are evening classes for the seminarians. Uh, eight o'clock we have the beginning of our holy hour and night prayer. So we finish at 9.15. Uh, we spend close to three hours every day uh, in the church. Our present land we learned about five years ago is unstable. The whole abbey and school sit on a landslide and we became aware of that in 1998. We had a slope failure at the southeast end of the high school and had to take off part of the building. We lost about a fifth of our space. And um, when we t brought in geotechnical people and architects to expand here and stabilize our land mass, they told us that really it was not feasible, that all the buildings would have to be raised and the entire property dug down about 132 feet <laughs> and recompacted. And by the way, you have to leave while this takes place. So we realized we have to move. And so we're, we have a piece of land we've identified uh, about 11 miles from here as the crow flies, about 34 if you use the roads. And we're going to build a new abbey and school at that location. And profits from these albums will help defray that cost. We've never had buildings that are a real true abbey where the life can unfold in kind of the way it's meant to be. And um, it's always been just adding a room here, adding a, a classroom there to sort of fit our expansion and to actually have a plant, a building, a home that is conceived as an abbey where we'll be able to live as canons that would be something very beautiful to have. It would add a serenity to our life that I think would be very much helpful in living out the vocation. Well, first, donations help. Um, you can donate money. Uh, if you have an expertise in art building, architecture, you can get involved. You can introduce your friends to the Abbey. We just need to widen the circle of friends and people who would be interested in helping to preserve monasticism on the West Coast. Amen.